In this class, we will try to solve one more problem of transmission line. Let us try to understand the problem first. It is being given that a lossless transmission line T1 and T2 which is nothing but T1 and T2 a lossless transmission line. And now there is a plot, there is a plot of input reflection, there is a plot of input reflection coefficient tau as a function of frequency is given to us which is nothing but this. Now, if you see it is the plot of reflection coefficient with respect to frequency right. So, you can observe that at 0.5 gigahertz the reflection coefficient is maximum which is nothing but 1 at 1 gigahertz the reflection coefficient is 0 right. Another part is it is being given that the phase velocity of the signal is given as 2 into 10 power 8 meter per second. Now, what I need to find it out? We have to find this L. The L, what is L? L is nothing but the length of this. You can see that T1, the length is given as 1 meter for the first transmission line, the first part of the transmission line and the second part of the transmission line, the length is given as L. We have to find the value of L, right? Okay. Now, in order to proceed this, what we know is already input reflection coefficient graph is given to me right. Now, what we know about the reflection coefficient? So, we know that tau is nothing but Z L minus Z naught right this we already know that by Z L plus Z naught at if I consider at one frequency let us say that I am talking about f equal to 1 gigahertz this is the frequency. So, at f equal to 1 gigahertz right. In this case tau is 0 right. What do you mean by tau is 0? It means reflection coefficient there is no reflection right and when that is possible? It is only possible when Z L is equal to Z naught right. When it is a match impedance right then only you will not have any reflection right. The condition when your reflection coefficient would be 0 is when your impedance is match right Z L is equal to Z naught. So, if Z L is equal to Z naught this gets subtracted this becomes 0 right ok. So, if I look into this circuit what I am going to say is let me call this part of the circuit as Z A. Let me call this part of the circuit as Z B right and this will be my equivalent side. Now, how Z what would be the value of Z A? Z A is if I look here it comes out to be 50 ohm right. If I look from here this resistance so 50 ohm. Z B is nothing but looking into this side where characteristic impedance is 50 ohm and it is an open circuit right. So, this part of the segment. Now, if I observe how Z A and Z B are there connected it is nothing but if I send some current here it will get split right. So, Z A and Z B are in for sure in parallel right. So, let me introduce another term called as Z equivalent L which should be Z A parallel with Z B right. So, I am going to call the equivalent part of this right. If I draw that equivalent plot how it will look like? Z equivalent L this will be a Z naught which comes out to be 50 in this case right. So, this part is nothing but if you take out this whole thing which is nothing but Z A parallel with Z B you will have this Z equivalent L ok. Now, we have if I look into this part of the only circuit now we are talking about tau at this point right we are looking at tau at this point. Now, again if I apply the same thing what I can say is my reflection coefficient at 1 gigahertz would be 0 only if Z equivalent is equal to Z naught right same way. If Z equivalent L is equal to Z naught then only my reflection coefficient tau would be 0 at 1 gigahertz right. It means what should be the value of Z equivalent L based on that we say that this thing should be 50 right ok. So, that quantity should be 50. So, what we have concluded is at 1 gigahertz if you want the reflection coefficient to be 0 your Z equivalent L should be equal to 50. So, it is a matched impedance and you will have a 0 reflection coefficient. Now, let me rub this and we will continue on this.
okay now what is za za i already know that it comes out to be 50 because if i look here what would be zb zb will be nothing but it is remember it's an open circuit right for an open circuit we have already derived what would be your input impedance right for an open circuit input impedance was if you remember it was minus j z naught cot beta l in this case this l is nothing but your this length so let me call this capital n right this we have already seen in the previous videos right for an open circuit what would be your input impedance that comes out to be minus j z naught cot beta l okay now what we know about the z equivalent l z equivalent l is nothing but z a parallel with z b now the interesting point to note is the interesting point to note here is z a a is 50 z b is some complex term as of now but i want the z equivalent l should be equal to how much it should be equal to 50 now how that is possible it means it is only possible if z a is 50 and i want the parallel equivalent to be 50 only possible if z b is infinite right if i take z b equal to 0 what will happen 0 parallel with 50 right again you will have a small resistance right or nothing but you will have a 0 ohm right so the only possible case is when z b is infinite it means the the input impedance in case of this part if i look from here is infinite then only your z equivalent l will be 50 ohms right so now i have reached a point i know that z b should be infinite let's see how i can proceed on this okay so what we are saying is z b should be equal to infinite in order to satisfy this condition okay now z b is minus j z not cot beta l let me let me substitute the values there so z b is equal to minus j z naught cot would be nothing but 2 pi by lambda times of l now this quantity can go to infinity when either z naught is infinity or or the cot part itself is bringing to infinity right but z naught is given to me right z naught is already 50 for this part right so z naught is 50 so i can substitute this right I can substitute this. So, the only possibility when Zb goes to infinity is this cot term, this part goes to infinity, right? So, what we are saying is if cot 2 pi by lambda into L is equal to infinity, right? This quantity, this thing should go to infinity. At what value of L cot will be infinity, right? Now, this you can easily find it right if if I am saying that if L is equal to if L is equal to lambda by 2, I am something randomly values you see, L is lambda by 2, then it, this will become cot 2 pi by lambda dot lambda by 2. What will happen? Lambda lambda get cancelled this will be cot pi. What is cot pi? Cot pi is nothing but your infinity, right? So, this comes out to be infinity, right? It means what we have concluded is, we have concluded the length should be equal to or this quantity should be equal to lambda by 2, right? So, length is lambda by 2. So, this one part I can say that I know that the length should be equal to lambda by 2. The problem is, I have to answer in terms of meter, I do not have to give the answer in terms of wavelength, right? Lambda by 2 or half of the wavelength, I do not have to conclude in that way. We can easily do that because already the phase velocity is given to us, right? So, let us proceed on this. So, what we found it out is l is equal to lambda by 2 right now if you observe 
phase velocity is already given to me right so which is nothing but vp is equal to 2 into 10 power 8 is already given to me what is vp phase velocity is nothing but your omega by beta which is also equal to which is also equal to 2 into 10 to the power 8 right what is omega omega is 2 pi f right beta is nothing but 2 pi by lambda lambda will go down it's nothing but 2 into 10 power 8 right now if i solve this what will happen 2 pi 2 pi will get cancelled 2 pi 2 pi will get cancelled f lambda is this right so f we are dealing at what frequency we are dealing at we started saying that we are talking about frequency of 1 gigahertz right so in this case i should substitute f is equal to 1 gigahertz so at f equal to 1 gigahertz right what would happen so the lambda would be lambda would be 2 into 10 to the power 8 divided by 1 into 10 to the power 9 this comes out to be 0 0.2 meter right so my lambda is 0 0.2 meter then what is the length it will be nothing but 0.2 divided by 0.2 divided by 2 which comes out to be if i substitute the value here lambda value here or i can say that if i substitute l is equal to 0.2 divided by 2 which comes out to be 0.1 meter and so we are able to find it out what would be the length of this part of the transmission line right t2 which should be 0.1 meter right we'll see more how to solve more problems on transmission line in the next